Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Ryland. And I'm Maddie, and we'll be your hosts for this year's African Heritage Assembly. February 2022 marks the 38th year of African Heritage Month in Nova Scotia. This year's theme is Through Our Eyes, the Voices of African Nova Scotians. The theme recognizes the long-standing history of people of African descent in Canada. This year, students of African descent and teachers have created a beautiful representation of our culture and our talent. This is through our voice, Af African Nova Scotians, music, poetry, and drumming. To start off this year's assembly, we'll have some opening remarks from our principal, Anne Finley. Good morning, everyone. Um, the 2022 African Heritage Month theme, Through Our Eyes, the Voices of African Nova Scotians, recognizes the legacies of people of African descent through first voice, lived realities, and experiences. Our goal from this theme is that when we listen to others' perspectives, interpretation, and views on the world, particularly those from marginalized communities, that we will gain a more meaningful understanding of how to make our world a better place. I want to thank our staff who embed cultural perspective into their teaching throughout the year. As well, I want to thank our students who have been working hard all month and all year to share African Nova Scotian culture and perspectives. I hope you enjoy this month's virtual assembly celebrating African Heritage Month. Thank you. Thanks for those words, Ms. Finley. Now, if you would all please rise and remove your hats for the singing of the Black National Anthem by Justin Skinner and Cadence Johnson. Justin and Cadence. Now we'll have a piece of poetry from our very own Maddie Cromwell. This is my truth. Growing up in a dominated white society has opened my eyes to many truths. First, I learned little about my rich African history and heritage. Slavery started in the year, and Martin Luther King was a, were the only topics I remember. Black history, my history, what history? Nothing deeper, just the same recycled lessons taught over and over again. Second, I think people sometimes forget that it is still wrong to make assumptions, like when I speak up and people think I shouldn't because they don't think I'm black enough, or when teachers assume that as the only black student, I'd be okay representing the mass. Wait, what did you say in class again? Slavery started in the year, and Martin Luther King was a, because anyone can repeat that? I learned nothing. Third, and the most important truth, is that I have to keep keeping on. So even though I still have to deal with racial slurs and racism at school, and I still have to deal with, sorry, you're too black for the white kids and too white for the black kids, I cannot, I will not, be silent. Sorry, my voice matters. I matter. And it stops mattering the day I become silent. I will continue to walk my path to my destiny, and I will continue to live my truth. Thanks for that, Maddie. Now we're going to have a piece of drumming done by our North Nova Education Center Performing Arts Group.
And now, we have a piece of music written by our very own Kofi Mensah and Rollin McClellan. Shana K on the beat. Choices that we make, the voices that I pray get heard. Feelings so out of place, I hurt. I guess the color of the skin occurs. Ay, hoping it's not too late. African voices, they strange. Yeah, yeah, you can make a change. Yeah, yeah, you can make Tough a change. Tough days, oh yeah, we know. Been beat down, yeah, I've seen this before. Uh, trying to get our names out. Tryna get numb Voices of the community So many people like you and me oh, But what is really meant By saying that you are Of African descent Let me tell you now the Music got a rich culture and history Oh from the continent to the West Indies And we'll carry on our legacy Cause that's what African descent means to me Choices that we make The voices that I pray get heard Feeling so out of place I hurt I guess the color of the skin occurs Hoping it's not too late African voices they strain Now, we'd like to take a minute to watch a video in tribute of Mr. Dorrington and Wanda Robinson, who have recently passed away. as Nova Scotia's sister to courage, but Wanda Robson was a force to be reckoned with herself. Viola did it her way. For much of her life, Robson was a voice for her sister Viola Desmond, who of course is a Canadian civil rights icon after being arrested for refusing to leave the whites only section of a New Glasgow theater back in 1946. I never thought I'd see this A or this. Yeah. Never, yeah. ever, my wildest dreams. Yeah. In 2010, Viola Desmond was posthumously pardoned by then Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia, Mayhem Francis. You, you know, my, my, my hope, and I know her hopes would be in the young people of today, yesterday, and tomorrow. In whatever area they are, they never forget who they are. And to the words, as my mother said, education, education, education. That's what we need. That's what is there for us. And we can do it. You can do it. I'm, I'm setting, I'm 94, but my hopes are with the future. Please, please, educate yourself. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Strami. We went out into the community to ask African Nova Scotians what it means to them to be an African Nova Scotian and what this year's theme means to them. So what does it mean to be, to be black and to celebrate African Heritage Month? Um, I really like the fact that we're celebrating. And to me, it means to be part of a distinct group of people that represent strength and resilience. African Nova Scotian people had no other option but to be strong and resilient. When we think back to the history of African Nova Scotian people getting here um, into Nova Scotia, it wasn't an easy journey. Understanding the history about uh, how uh, black settlers came to Nova Scotia and to Canada and understanding what caused those migrations and those emigrations. The forced migration from the continent Africa into British colonies where they were put into slavery and endured the Jim Crow era, and then even today, what they continuously go through in society. It heightens uh, things that black people have done. It brings awareness, it brings all kinds of things forward that we didn't even know, like the dustpan, like a black man created the dustpan, peanut butter done by a black man. All the things that we use daily are things that are made from people of my ancestry. Giving African Nova Scotians the opportunity and the space to tell their stories, to tell their history, not allowing other people to tell their history through their eyes, with their own biases. Just being cognizant of the black communities around my province and how things are going on there socially and economically. Um, and just doing my best to be a good role model and uplift those people in my community that see me as a role model and um, just trying to be a positive influence on those around me. So the best way that I can put it here is through this um, proverb, African, African proverb that states, until the lion tells his side of the story, the tales of the hunt shall always glorify the hunter. When I'm at school or when I'm out in a boat, I make sure that people know that I'm a very proud black person, that I'm a very proud black woman. We'd like to thank everyone for participating in this year's assembly and for respecting and recognizing our history and culture. Now, to close off our ceremony, we'll have one final performance from the North Nova Performing Arts Group. <laughs> 